This is a 260 horsepower, sport bike eating death machine. And it is completely legal to be riding on the road. Now this is a little 30 horsepower entry level CBR and with one little modification is completely illegal. We bought some of the most illegal motorcycle mods that we can find on Amazon and now we're gonna test them out. And then we're gonna show them to our police officer to see what they think about them. It's gonna be awesome, let's go do it. So some states have inspection. Pennsylvania has an awful inspection and Craig was actually one of those awful inspectors. Yeah. You still, you still have your inspection license? I think so. So Craig can also give us that input of whether these things are inspectable. So here's a product that was just removed from Amazon. We were not able to get it. I was really hoping that we could get it, but we couldn't because they said it was so incredibly illegal. They couldn't even sell it on Amazon. It's really illegal. Really illegal. What it was, was this. It's a little remote control magnet leaf that goes on the back of your license plate. And if you get pulled over and the cop tries to look at it, while you're pulling over, you press a little button and it drops it off, the, it, it drops it on the ground and then you have to buy another one. But if you're going through tolls or you're, you're flying past people or doing illegal stuff, you have a little leaf covering up like a letter and a half of your, of your <laughs> thing. It's kind of, it's kind of a yeah, hilarious idea actually. I love it. But it's pretty clever. Clever girl. But concepts like this are not new. I mean, people have been doing this stuff for a long time. You know, what do they do with motorcycles? There's a big trend where sideways license plate were a thing. Um, so it's not new. And the whole concept is that they won't be able to read your tag and that won't connect it to you. The problem is they don't really need that, your whole tag. You know, they see you have a red Harley Davidson. They can read most of the tag. They can probably fill in the gaps. That's why I used to steal a new plate every night. Steal a new plate every single night. Yep. The other thing, I check out this idea. You create fake twin brother. You buy the exact same car. You keep that one car in a garage. You have twin brother, like two two different IDs. Every time you get pulled over, you flip over the, your tag oh. and show the other car's tag. And then he gets all the Same tickets. black car. He gets all the tickets, but he's not a real person. Oh. And then every time something good happens, it's always, oh, here's my life. My spotless and clean. Think about it. It could work. It's very legal. I'm not a lawyer. Don't listen to anything I say. The next item we have is not illegal, but it's so stupid. I wished it was illegal because it is awful, awful, awful. I remember the first time I saw one of these, the most awful, awful thing you could ever possibly do. And it's this pocket knife. Now this is actually a tame version of the one of ones I've seen. I've seen somewhere. This is a legit knife blade. And so this is your lever and you're pulling back to your other fingers. So if you're, so if you're riding your bike, you know, the brake lever is you're pulling back. You're not, you know, you don't brake with all your fingers. You brake with two of your fingers, sometimes even one. You're pulling it back to crush your other fingers. Let's say you get a bike accident and this thing hits something. You're going to cut your fingers off. Also, look at the, Look at that. Like that's sharp. I bet you we could open a box with them. Stupidest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, that's gonna impale you. Like, things get squirrely, that's going in ya. The last thing you want on your motorcycle is any type of spike, any type of blade, any type of impaler when you wreck. Awful idea. <laughs> Are you gonna keep it as a box cutter? Ooh, maybe <laughs> nunchucks. So as an avid motorcycle rider, I like to be seen by the people around me and I like to be heard. I don't necessarily have to have a super loud exhaust. That's why this one is kind of unusual and it doesn't really make that much sense to me. This is exciting. I didn't look in the boxes, so they're all surprises. This. <laughs> what? Holy hammers, what did you get? The most illegal horn you can get on Amazon for your motorcycle. Apparently, and I don't really understand this, but in a lot of states, you cannot have a train horn, especially California. Everything that's good is illegal in California. Everything that's bad is very legal in California. Don't, don't ever go to California. These are illegal in a lot of states because they're just too loud. We happen to live in the state of Pennsylvania, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. No one knows what a Commonwealth actually is, but that's where we live. But train horns are not specifically illegal in Pennsylvania. So, let's go put this on a motorcycle. All right, so we got the horn thing all set up. That's about as a professional as a job you could ever ask for. It's solid. Let's, uh, let's step, a, a step like 20 feet away. It's at 50, 52 decibels right now. Craig, when I give you the signal, hit the normal horn. Take it up to 96 decibels. That's actually pretty loud. Do the uh, do the air horn. 109. 
That's loud. I think someone told me that every time it, at a certain point, every time it doubles and like it goes up a couple points in decibels, it's actually doubling the amount. I don't, I don't know. What we learned from the last time, I don't know anything about decibels. But that's from 20 feet away. What happens when you put it close? Ready? Yeah, 124. <laughs> it's so loud. It's incredibly loud. Let's go. Uh, let's go see what the people on the street think about it. He gave me a honk and a laugh. Give it to him, Craig. Do it again, Craig. Lay it on him. <laughs> Talking to his people. A train. Talking to his people. That was awesome. Wow. That was really loud. My ears are still bleeding. Yeah. Sound like a train. Let's go to the next thing. The next one is by far the second most common illegal mod that you're going to find on a motorcycle. And a lot of people are getting away with it. And that is underbody lights. Which um, I always thought was kind of strange because I want to be seen and it's hard to see bikes in that, at nighttime. Mm -hmm. This makes bikes very lit up. It does like a carnival. But the reason I think that they make these things illegal is mainly because of what's going on in Japan. A simple Google search of Bozo Zuko will show you what the natural progression is after legalizing underbody lights. It goes like this. $20 Amazon underbody lights, converting your whole motorcycle to this Bozo Zuko type of motorcycle. And then before you know it is your crane kicking the dad from Johnny Tsunami to try to save a girl you just met three days ago. That by the way, you never see her ever again like they never saw each other ever again wow that escalated quickly the other potential reason why they make these things illegal is because like a third of the millennials can't handle that much stimuli is that how you describe your generation that's, john that's not my generation yeah, it is i don't know what my generation's called anymore. you're millennial <laughs> you are millennial <laughs> The other potential issue is that a third of Gen Zers, when they see this, will have seizures from being overstimulated. You know, Gen Zers. The generation that recently self-described themselves as the new greatest generation. Slash, but for reals, we're lit, fam. And that brings us to another segment of this video. And that is weird motorcycle laws that some of the, some states, some places still have. In Minnesota, when you're a student rider or on an, what they call an endorsement, you are required by law to wear pants. However, you are not required by law to wear underpants. Huh, let freedom ring. Yeah, America. Yeah. I'm not wearing any underpants either. In the great state of Tennessee, it is illegal to hunt animals and people from a motorcycle. However, it is perfectly lawful to hunt whales while riding a motorcycle. In Tennessee. In Tennessee. Wow. Now what gets goofy about that is Tennessee is landlocked. So I can only assume that that law was written at a time where some type of whale tornado happened and they needed people cruising around. Getting rid of the whales. I seen something, I seen a documentary about something similar that happened. So that, that's, that's my best assumption. And the next one is from the awful state of Massachusetts where nothing good comes from there, where it's illegal to have a gorilla on the back of your motorcycle as a passenger. Bear, no problem, but gorillas? Nope. Is it anything in that family or like chimpanzees? Just like I think chimps are, uh, uh, chimps are okay. Orangutans. That's okay. Perfectly fine. It's gorillas. Now some people say it's impossible. Can't really have a gorilla in the back of your bag. Other people say that it's dangerous. They say, they say that the trail of banana peels on the highway would be catastrophic. I've seen Mario Kart. I think it's super cool. <laughs> <laughs> but there's no way for us to test this out. Oh? Uh. Oh. But there was a way to test it out. And we found out that you people in Massachusetts don't know what you're missing. Now this next one is by far the number one most popular thing. It's also the most confusing thing. And that is stuff like this. Aftermarket exhaust. What did I buy? What did I buy this for? Aftermarket exhaust no one really knows whether it's legal or not benefits of putting aftermarket exhaust on your bike craig What's louder that? you look really cool in the wawa parking lot also sheets too weight savings and potentially performance this lets people know that you stunt and race and your bike is bike is modified i stunt 
And the thing is, you know, it, it varies from state to state of whether it's illegal. When you buy a lot of exhaust, it says like first track use only, off-road use only. Apparently it's not really a thing. That doesn't mean anything. That does not approve it to be used off the track. It's all very confusing. The problem is after looking on Amazon, none of the exhausts really did it for me. None of them were really like hitting the mark of what I needed for illegal. Like I need that next level of illegal exhaust. Mm -hmm. So just like we did with, with the M1 Moto gloves, just like we did with the, uh, the fast detailer, just like we did with the tank straps, we found a gap in the marketplace and we decided to launch our own very illegal motorcycle exhaust. Because if loud pipes save lives, we want to help save lives. All the lives. All of them. And all this fun has reminded me of one of my favorite Bible verses. 3 John 1 11. Beloved, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. The one who does good is of God. The one who does evil has not seen God. These are really good exhausts, that nerd. Yeah! <laughs> Check it out, man! <laughs> no. Check it out! Big performance. Nice! Yeah. Illegal in all 50 states, including Puerto Rico. So, that's pretty cool, right? Wow. That's no one's wild impressed factors. with this. Yeah, so I'm pretty pumped about it. Um, well, this isn't even an Amazon product though. Oh, but it is, Craig. This is our newest Amazon product. The link is in the description. Like, I'm, I'm being honest, we this is posted on Amazon. We will, if you buy this, we will ship you a bunch of sheet metal. It's a kit. It's a kit of how to build your own, and then a bunch of sheet metal screws. You're gonna love it, it's awesome. Anyone can do this. You can build it with the kids. Need some tin snips. And then the kit and the screwdriver. Pretty pumped about it. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah, I'm interested to see what the uh, what our uh, police officer friend says when he sees it. We'll find that out at the end. Let's go to the next thing. All right, so the next thing is not illegal, but if putting gorillas on the back and using train horns is illegal, then this darn well should also be illegal. The most hated thing, so you have to put mirrors on your bike, right? You have to put rear view mirrors on your motorcycle. And then we get these. These tiny little, imagine you're riding the bike. This is shaking a little bit because your bike kind of rumbles. It's impossible. This is worse than not having a mirror. Craig, what, what's your feelings on these? No, I'm not a little mirror guy because like you said, with the shaking and the little, I'd rather just, you know. So, hate them. There's two ways to always be in good standing with the law. One, don't break it. Don't break the law. Two, always have your awesome new bikes and beards. Awesome new shirt. Oh my oh. God. Oh. Oh. We released these things in Daytona of this year and now they're available. We have them in stock and they're available to buy right now. Get them. It's going to be awesome. And once supplies run out, we'll have to order them later. But we still we have some right now in stock. These shirts are softer than a duck. They're literally the latest in awesome shirt technology. You guys are gonna love them. Here's a quick little clip of me showing you all the cool things you can do while wearing a shirt like this. you but I don't put ice cream cones in my back pocket on Sundays while I'm in Kentucky and I also try my best to follow all the Pennsylvania laws and statutes. So apparently in Pennsylvania, there's a kind of a strange obscure law that says that when you're riding your motorcycle on backcountry roads every mile you gotta stop shoot a flare and then wait 10 minutes for the livestock to move out of the way and then do that every mile. So I got I got plenty of flares. It's gonna take me a little while, but it's the wall. I don't know where the livestock's supposed to be coming from, but. What's next is possibly the most controversial thing on the entire list. I love controversy. That is this. Oh my gosh. I know what you're thinking. You're like, Sean, what is that? This is what it looks like. It is the biggest, fastest growing trend in cruiser bike, Harley type culture. And I think it's the most ridiculous thing ever. It is a, it's a whip and they call this, I, I asked a guy one time, I'm like, hey, what is that thing? He's like, oh, it's a get back whip. And I was like, what's it for? And he's like, well, if a car gets too close to you or tries to run you off the road, you pull this lever down, it releases this, it comes off, and then you can use this whip to hit stuff and to hit people's windows. What the guy, what the guy described was to me was he's like, 
You can use this to break people's windows. <laughs> it's like, what? Why do we need this? And then I, I did some research on it, and one of the excuses that Harley guys will give, and they'll be like, well, what happens if you're riding your motorcycle in a development or a neighborhood and a dog chases you? Pull your whip off and start whipping the dog. Our motorcycles have something for that. It's called the throttle. How long have you been riding motorcycles? Uh, since I was 16. Right, I've been for like 20 years. Never had an issue. I, ne I never needed a whip to hit with the no. whip of a dog or an animal. No. I had to on my bicycle once, but I just <coughs> kicked it. Right. I did. I kicked, I kicked the dog. Dogs all the time. It was a dog or me, and I chose me. Here's another flaw with this, right? They mount it right here. So when you when you go to pull it off, don't pull it off like this because you're going to grab a whole handful of front brake and then you're going to wreck the bike. So if you pull it off straight down, it comes off. But don't pull it off like this. All right, so now we brought in a friend who is a police officer and he's gonna fill us in on whether these things that we're doing are illegal or illegal, what's going on, and we're gonna play a little bit of game. This is Kevin. How you doing, man? Good. And I hate to correct you right off the bat, but uh, I'm, I'm not a cop anymore. I just, just retired, actually. Former police officer. Well, congratulations on your uh, retirement. I appreciate that. He looks like a cop, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got a couple things. Um, before we get to the things, I actually have a few questions about things that we currently own and have currently ridden on the road. The game we're going to play is, would you pull us over? And if I was driving that Paul Auto cycle, would you pull me over? The spaceship? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. If for no other reason, just to say that, you know, hey, I don't know what you guys did today, but I pulled over a spaceship. <laughs> right. Okay. I thought so. If I was in here, okay, I'm in the chariot, I'm holding ropes, and it's being powered by that Orange County chopper, would you pull me over? <laughs> I'm controlling the bike from the chariot with cables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Sorry, I was speechless there for a second. <laughs> uh, absolutely, I would pull you over and uh, and I would probably say, license and registration, please, Ben Hur. <laughs> <laughs> if I was driving that jet ski on the highway, would you pull me over? Yes, yes, I would, I would pull over a jet ski driving down the highway. <laughs> yeah, driver's license, registration. I, I, I was actually spraying my jet and it was, hitting, it was hitting a police officer behind me. And he was, he was in the city and he just refused to pull me over. He's like, dude, I got too much stuff. He's like, he's like whatever, you know? <laughs> okay, the first one is over here. We have, apparently, it's questionable <laughs> if you have a train horn on your motorcycle. So if you heard this noise, you might want to plug your ears. It's a... Uh, we need a new battery. <laughs> that was a little underwhelming. Yeah, that was underwhelming. It was. <laughs> would you pull me? Would you? Would you? <laughs> would you pull me over? <laughs> if I saw that, uh, you would probably get a second look. If I was beside you in traffic and you started tuning your horn, I, I, yeah, I think we would probably at least have a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't be able to hear it though. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Definitely odd. Definitely not something you you see every day. And and I think that's one thing about a, a lot of uh, a lot of officers. At some point, they get to a point where they think they've seen it all, or well, you've you've never seen it all. And I think when when you come across something like this, the guy's kind of old and salty. Maybe he just kind of bleh, and goes away. Or you know, like I said, maybe uh, maybe there's grounds for further conversation. So you heard it here. We need to normalize train horns. What if we were to sit at a railroad crossing and hide a little bit and honk as people cross the railroad tracks to scare them? That's just fun. It's just a good time. Like I, I don't know. Is it gonna, is it gonna just cause people to slow down, or is it going to cause panic and and start up a stir about ghost trains? <laughs> ghost trains. Ghost trains. Stay tuned. We'd have got you if it was for those meddling kids. <laughs> All right, so a big popular thing right now is underbody lights. You know, the underglow lights, are they legal? Would you, if you saw someone driving down the highway and it's all lit up green, cruising down the highway, are you gonna pull them over? Whenever they first came out, I would say absolutely. It's been a few years. I, I, think, I think under the current statutes, uh, and I, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think anything changed. It could still be construed as, as ornamental lighting. However, in the age of, of texting, and, and all the seniors out there on the road, if, if the light is not obnoxious and it's maybe a visibility thing, right. I, I would think a, lo uh, 
I would personally not have a problem with that. If you were riding a bike and you had, you was lit up and a cop pulled you over and you told him like, I'm just trying to be seen. I'm trying to get home to my, fa my family. That's, that's, that's a pretty good uh, argument. It is, unless there was something else going on, which oftentimes there is something else going on. Because all motorcyclists do drugs. Yeah. <laughs> Fact. <laughs> <laughs> that is false. <laughs> the next question is, can you whale hunt from the back of a motorcycle in Pennsylvania? I mean, kind of a ridiculous question. I don't, I don't think there's anything cutely illegal about that, but I think you're going to have a hard time pulling that one off, Sean. Maybe, maybe you could go to Tennessee and, uh, and film that. I, I, would, I would certainly like to see it. We're working on it. So this, have you ever seen these on a motorcycle? It's, I'm not sure. They call it a get back whip. Like if you start to fall off your bike? No, if you want to get back at someone else on the road. So it's, 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 they're illegal to even have in California. So you, you would, this is on your handlebar, you pull that off, it releases it, and then you can crack someone's window or whatever. If you saw this on the road, just, just hanging there. No one's doing it, I wasn't doing anything with it. But it's just dangling from his bike like this. Did you pull him over? No. Not just for having it, having it displayed on the bike, no. If he was beating someone with it? Well, then, then you have a problem. You, like, another, you have another problem. I mean, that, that's kind of like, I mean, anything, and I mean literally anything can be used as a weapon. And, and if, if I got a report that some guy on the bike hit someone's windshield with a, with a, with a miniature bullwhip, then, and I saw it hanging there, you know, again, I, I would ask a few questions. As far as it just hanging there, no. I might think it's odd, I might ask about it. Would you pull me over if you saw me riding this? big performance. It also sounded like this. Got a pretty good sound to it. Absolutely, you would get pulled over for that. You on on any vehicle, you are not you're not supposed to do anything to amplify the noise. That's I mean, if you wanted to go out and enforce that, I mean, all the rice burners that go out, you know, guys that go out and buy a $20,000 car and then do $20,000 worth of alterations on it for some reason to make it sound loud and cool. Yeah, you, you could get pulled over and get cited for that. And, and something like this, where it looks like a street bike had a love child with, uh, I don't know. A, a silo. A, <laughs> yeah, a corn crib. A pizza oven. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could you right. probably expect to get pulled over. If not just the, the visual, the, yeah, that, that, was, that was loud. That wraps it up. We'll see you guys next time. Check out this next video right here. And thanks, Kevin, for uh, your info. Anytime, man. Where are you going, Sean? I'm gonna get me that whale.